Hey, I'm Laurel Snyder, and this is Boodlow. Right, Boodlow? Yeah. And Boodlow and I are here reading books. I am a children's author, and I have been doing some story times this week, and then somebody just wrote to me and asked me to read a book I had not yet read. And so I wrote to my illustrator, Chuck Groning, and he said, yes, it would be okay if I read you Hungry Jim. So, today we're going to read Hungry Jim. When Jim woke up on Tuesday, his tail had fallen asleep. This seemed odd. Jim had never had a tail before. So that means that he was something else. Now he's a lion. But before he was a lion, he was something else. From downstairs, Jim could hear his mother calling, Jim, pancakes for breakfast. Jim's stomach began to growl. She sounded delicious. I don't feel much like a pancake today, called Jim. Well, what do you feel like? asked his mother. Jim stared into the mirror. He felt beastly. And you can see the pictures around the mirror, so you can guess now that Jim used to be a regular little boy. Jim was not sure what to do. On the one hand, he did not really want to devour his mother. On the other hand, <gasps> so what happened? She was delicious. Jim felt terrible, but he was still hungry. So Jim jumped out the wind window and ran away down the street. There he met a dog and a dog walker. This is awful, cried Jim as he ran. It's big, it's bad, it's truly the worst. Jim's stomach only growled louder. Shut up, Jim told it. Nobody asked you. On Main Street, Jim met an old lady sweeping and a girl with a donut. And all we see is, we see the broom in the air and the donut flying through the air. The further he ran, the hungrier Jim became. He wanted to eat anything. He wanted to eat everything. He wanted to cry. So some of the things Jim wants are his hunger. His stomach is growling and he's really hungry, but there's another part of him that doesn't like that. And I, I wonder if you've ever felt that way, like if you've ever been in class in school and you knew you should be quiet, raise your hand quietly, but instead you're like, oh, oh, oh call on me, like that feeling. Or if you know that you should finish your sandwich before you eat your cupcake, but you eat your cupcake first. So I think we all have a little bit of Jim in us sometimes. Further down the road, Jim came to a shop. This looks promising, he said. And oh, it was. I hate you, Jim yelled at his stomach as he fled the scene. Jim ran. He ran some more. He ran fast and away. But wherever Jim ran, there he was. How do you think Jim is feeling now? At last, Jim came to a cliff. He stood on the edge of the cliff. The waves below him looked furious and confused. I know how you feel, said Jim. Jim's stomach began to growl again. Shh, said Jim, hush up, I'm trying to think. Then Jim heard another growl. It was the loudest growl yet. Quiet, Jim said to his stomach. But this growl was not coming from Jim's stomach. It was coming from a bear. The bear was tall and ugly. The bear was full of teeth. Now I am going to eat you, snarled the bear. Do you have to, asked Jim. Pretty much, said the bear. I'm a bear. Oh, said Jim. 
But Jim's stomach disagreed. It did not want to be eaten. It gave a low growl of warning, and then suddenly Jim was charging the bear. He was springing and howling, pouncing and yowling. He was loose and wild, and oh, it felt good. You're mine, bear, shouted Jim. Then, all at once, Jim wasn't hungry anymore. In fact, he was stuffed. So he headed home, past the shop, up Main Street, and back down his own quiet block. And you can see in the pictures that Jim is now kind of burping up all the people he ate before when he was hungry. After a moment of deliberation, Jim pounced back into the kitchen. It was a huge relief to find things, mostly as he'd left them. So now Mom is back. But when he got to his room... <gasps> And then, what's happening? Jim is turning back into a boy, except that now he's a little boy with a bear in his room. Jim was faced with a dilemma. Jim solved it. He didn't feel even a little bit bad about that. He only felt hungry. for pancakes. The end. So that's kind of a funny book, isn't it? This is a book that I wrote and uh, Chuck illustrated very much with a sense of, do you guys recognize my shirt? With a sense of appreciation for another author named Maurice Sendak, who's written lots of books. He's no longer alive, but he wrote lots of books while he was alive that many of us love a great, great deal. Um, and in particular, related to this one, he wrote a book called Where the Wild Things Are that you may have read. And so we have a, an acknowledgement, we call it, in the back of the book that says, Chuck and Laurel humbly dedicate this book to the memory of the unrivaled Maurice Sendak, who is alive inside all of us and occasionally peeks out in a book like this one. We ate him up. We loved him so. So one thing I want you to think about when you finish this book is anytime you take two books and you look at them side by side, so if you were to take this book and Where the Wild Things Are and look at them side by side, you can find things about them that are the same and you can find things about them that are different, that are, that are not the same. And so one thing that I thought might be a nice exercise for you this week while you're at home is to go and find two books that you like, any two books. You can draw parallels between literally any two books. Go find two books you like and sit down and read them both back to back, side by side, maybe with a friend or maybe with a grown up, and then have a conversation about them and have a conversation about the things that were the same and the things that were different and the things that you liked and the things that you didn't like so much and try and spend some time thinking about the relationship between the two books, okay? So check out my feed for more stories. I'll be reading more things as the weeks move along and uh, I hope you're all doing well wherever you are. And uh, I'm off to read a book now. Bye-bye.